A new area of interest could develop into a cyclone near the Seychelles on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for April 29th. Or would you believe it's been two and a half weeks since, well, we had one tropical weather bulletin in between, but since then is the last time we had another one. And uh, we're unclassified right now, there's no systems active, but we are looking at a potential system down in the Indian Ocean over the next few days, and maybe some more rumblings next week. 33 days now is all it is until Atlantic hurricane season begins, and there's no areas of interest, but there are a few little interesting features. Of course, severe storms still are blowing up across the Gulf of Mexico coast, and an extratropical system looking decent off Newfoundland, which we'll look at later. It's 16 days until the Eastern Pacific starts officially, uh, but no sign of life yet. But don't be fooled, it can start up very quickly as we enter May. But as of right now, nothing on the cards. In the Western Pacific, there's nothing here either at this point. Uh, just a few little thunderstorms down in the low latitudes there in the deep tropics. And in the North Indian Ocean, it's looking very quiet there as well. But a few little thunderstorms blowing up near the Maldives and the uh, Western Islands of India. In the Australian region, there's no systems active here either, of course. There is always the chance of a late season surprise, even at this stage. Uh, but it is getting rather late indeed now for any further activity. And it's very quiet across the whole Australian region. In the southwest Indian Ocean, then, this is what we've got. The 40% chance that we've designated in a somewhat unusual spot in the western Seychelles and could be headed towards the Comoros Islands and even the eastern coast of Tanzania on the mainland of Africa in the next few days. And in the South Pacific, we've got no areas of interest here either at this point, but there are a few little uh, storms not far from Samoa by the looks of things um, and further to the east, as a matter of fact, that is way over the open Pacific Ocean. So it's hardly an active tropics and this is the AOI that we're all very excited about because the first thing that might form since like two weeks ago. It's 131 kilometers from Grand Terre, 181 from Assumption Island, 300 from Astave, 402 from Grand Glorioso, and 432 from Gran Comore, the largest island of the Comoros, housing the capital Moroni, and the most populous as well. Uh, the system is expected to move southwestwards and then curve westwards and could eventually make landfall near the coast of Tanzania, um, which would be a fairly rare landfall, but you do get that kind of thing in the late season. Well, here it is right now with the latest imagery from the visible InSat satellite from India, and you can see how it's been progressing. It's starting to rotate, not fully convincing in terms of a circulation there at this point at all. It's still very weak, an estimated wind speed of around 30 miles per hour and a pressure estimate of around 1006 millibars and certainly no sign that it is a tropical cyclone yet but it is starting to look better as we continue to look at it here on the various Meteosat satellites now and the uh, infrared uh, showing a fair amount of convection it's not very deep convection um, especially around the, what would be the apparent center of course that is still not set in stone that that will be the center point right now we've just given our best estimate and then as you look towards the northeastern side still a little bit bare there that will need a little bit of work and still to the towards the east perhaps another potential circulation trying to compete now there's the atlantic system right now i say system it's an extratropical cyclone just want to show you this beautiful looking system right now and that's uh, affecting the weather in newfoundland as well uh, you you can see cloud brushing up there and this is a close-up of what's going on in the Atlantic and you can see that storm there along the coast of southern Texas and Louisiana where you can see some severe thunderstorms active right now severe thunderstorm warnings indeed and there were a few tornado warnings earlier in the morning very early on uh, in southern Texas and this is the eastern Atlantic if you're interested showing how things are looking there a few little systems already starting to brew there on the intertropical convergence zone but it's still too early to look at that yet well, the sea surface temperatures then look good. The eastern Pacific over 30 degrees in one or two spots, despite the uh, 
promised that we might enter the La Nina, cooler temperatures in the deep tropics uh, there in the equatorial zone. In the Atlantic, it's starting to look decent as well, up towards 30 degrees and one or two spots in the Caribbean, and the loop current also looking good. Western Pacific, very warm in the South China Sea, well over 30 degrees, pushing 32. The Philippine Sea, not quite as hot, but still looking decent near the Philippines, and eastwards towards Guam, Guam it's around 28. In the North Indian Ocean, Bay of Bengal, it is piping hot, 32 degrees and possibly more in parts of the Bay of Bengal and in the Andaman Sea, extending northwards 28 to 30 degrees Celsius even along the coast of Odisha. In the southwest Indian Ocean, those temperatures are very warm where this potential system might form. It's around 29 or 30 degrees Celsius near the Comoros and then towards the coast of northernmost Mozambique and Tanzania, it's around 29 to 30. In the Australian region, holding on some very warm water still as well in that zone, so always can't rule out a late season system. Coral Sea starting to cool a little bit there as well. Fiji still staying fairly warm as well, 30 degrees Celsius there, as is the northern half of Vanuatu. New Caledonia starting to go off the boil a little bit, around about 27 degrees. How does that compare to average? Well, this is what it shows right now. The oranges are above average, the blues are below average, and most areas that matter are above average. The eastern Pacific there, you can see quite a few cool spots there in the equatorial zone. That's a sign of this La Nina starting to creep in. And in the Atlantic, it's actually a little bit cool in the subtropics, but in the deep tropics, it's still staying warmer than average by around 2 or maybe 3 degrees in the main development region. Western Pacific looking close to average. South China Sea, the exception. Bay of Bengal very much above right now and it really matters at this time of year because we can get some big things in early May. Now here's the oceanic heat content still looking good in the South Pacific in a few spots there and the Coral Sea still a fair amount. Eastern Pacific really starting to get a, a fair bit there as well and the Western Pacific starting to look good especially in the Philippine Sea. We'll start whipping out the Atlantic charts soon as we get very close to Atlantic hurricane season. Well, let's check the GFS computer model then for the next five days. Uh, first of all, in the short range, and this is the system that it's developing not far from the Comoros, and then it does get very close to the main island there and uh, possibly delivers tropical storm force winds. And then it pushes on westwards, making landfall in very southernmost Tanzania uh, as a substantial tropical cyclone. Uh, certainly a big rain producer this one's expected to be. We don't expect to get that strong. We're probably giving it a peak here of around 50 miles per hour. And this is the rainfall expectation for the local region then, and this will be a turn up for the books for this zone, so it could get quite dangerous. Really significant amounts of rainfall for some of these islands and for the coastal region of eastern Africa, and we are looking at potentially up to 16 inches in a few spots, that's 400 millimetres. Uh, first of all on Grand Terre, that's around 11.5 inches there, that's nearly 300 millimetres. On Grand Comore, around 16 inches as mentioned that's 400 millimeters and on the eastern african coastline there up to 14 inches 350 millimeters in southernmost tanzania so really a significant scenario there for rain Look at the longer range then, and what do we have in store? Well, not too much, but there is a little uh, potential system forming in the, maybe just about the Australian region of the Indian Ocean there, way out to the west. There it is, starting to take shape around the 8th of May, moving towards the southwest. Uh, doesn't become particularly strong by the looks of things, but I tell you what, that is quite an anomaly to have it that late to see a system there. Uh, but if it would form anywhere in the Indian Ocean at this time of year, it probably would be somewhere in that zone. Scan the barcode and that will take you to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. And yes, it's still there. It's been ages since we've changed these slides. We're still waiting for Hone. Well, in the Silly Range, there's a lot going on in the Silly Range as a matter of fact as we enter the middle part of May. Of course, this is quite far out now, getting beyond two weeks. And, but there's a little cyclone there that pops up, literally pops up just east of Samar and then moves through the northern Visayas region into southern Luzon as a very tight compact system that really gains some traction in, those, uh, in the areas of water between those islands there and gets close to typhoon status would you believe but that is right at the end of the run and I imagine it will get dropped very quickly by the GFS model because it flips about like a fish when it does that. 
Well, the Bay of Bengal is a little bit of a different situation because, of course, we expect things much more to form here in early May, and the GFS is not disappointing. Uh, it's not the first time it's shown something here for the next uh, two weeks recently, but there it is, a new system forming right at the end of that run, it has to be said, though. So, again, extremely low confidence, but I must say, moving towards the northeast there, that would certainly blow apart the prediction that I just made. You can watch those predictions, by the way, on the YouTube channel if you haven't seen them yet for all the North Hem Northern Hemisphere basins this upcoming season. And this is the Indian Ocean system again, the Southern Indian Ocean. gets a little bit stronger there around the 11th and then weakens off again as conditions turn against it. Probably high wind shear, I would imagine, at this time of year. And then it gets wrapped up in an extratropical cyclone down there. Meanwhile, that thing near Australia uh, that formed there, moving off towards the west and then uh, dying out very quickly. That initially formed near uh, the southern coast of New Guinea. Wow, a lot to show there in the long range then on the models. Just as it was on this day, and this was... Uh, a rude awakening by all extents, uh, a category 5 cyclone making landfall in Bangladesh on this day in 1991. One of the most memorable cyclones to ever make landfall, one of the strongest to do so no matter what time of year it was, and one of the most devastating as well, uh, one of the deadliest, killing over I think 150,000 people, uh, an incredible uh, destructive and dangerous storm weakened slightly before landfall but it was at its peak today well back to where we are this year then we're about 32 33 percent below average so far for this year and you're not really surprised by that we haven't we've had a very dead april the quietest april since 2011 actually the first storm in the atlantic this year is alberto in the eastern pacific it's aletta and in the central pacific it's still hone in the western pacific we're still looking out for a in the north indian ocean it will be rimal and in the Southern Hemisphere, what's left of the season in the uh, Southwest Indian Ocean, of course, Hidaya might be this system. Robin is next in the Australian region, and Pitta is next in the South Pacific. That's all from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. I imagine we'll be back again tomorrow.